first of all, I have to say that you know I'm very disappointed with the with the, the way uh, AIDS has been handled in Uganda. Um, first, it came out. It, it's always been a disease of of fear. Um, the first time we got to know about AIDS was uh, we had this very American advert on our television that goes by the year 2000. No one would be alive, and the, you know the ad was showing skeletons and people. You know the deadline was basically the year 2000. Yeah. So, uh, if, uh, you know, uh, we were all terrified that you know we were not going to see the year 2000 or beyond. Uh, this was 1985, 86, um, and since then, you know, it's been a disease of fear. Um, it's it's been uh, put that way, and then all of a sudden. After creating so much fear, then we had uh, very first, the very first person we had as a public display. Mm -hmm. uh, the first, the, the person who became the face of AIDS in Uganda was a musician called Fidel Lutaya, who, uh, who came out and said, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm HIV positive, and he was a very popular musician. And then people actually said, oh, okay, oh my goodness, this is what actually the disease does to people. And after seeing him and people being emotionally attached to his music, uh, then it, be it became believable that oh, this this is a very very serious disease, mm. and after that now it became uh, the people who were then reported to have AIDS were really treated like outcasts, terrible ter terribly treated like outcasts. Um, as a consequence, was, yes, as a consequence, uh, uh, you know, because everybody was dreading to catch the disease. People were not speaking, as in, it it, it reached an extent where. Uh, you know, um, there was a lot of misinformation. Uh, some people believing if you just stood next to a person who's, who's got HIV, or some. Then there were rumors of uh, tomato sauce has blood in it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's all these kinds of crazy things. And then people stopped using tomato sauce for for a long time. And then uh, there was there was a lot of stigma then, and people continued to die. And there was this. All you know, all 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 we need is love. All we need is understanding. All we need is care. You couldn't say care then, when everybody was terrified and stigmatized by what was going on. Um, and then in the you know towards ninety six over there, uh, some drugs started showing up, and the rich, of course, uh, go, you know knew how to survive. Mm -hmm. It was then it be slowly by slowly with the introduction of drugs and all that, it became more. Of a, poor man's disease and then slowly by slowly the people who have been on drugs now started having all these other effects that were coming up. Uh, what do I have to say about aid, the AIDS situation in Uganda? Uh, away from what has been said about the drugs and everything, I just think that this whole thing is really, whatever it is, it's a real big business. My biggest disappointment, like I said, and this will always be my biggest disappointment, is that it, uh, you know, we have we have thrown away all independent thinking, mm. and everything is being dictated and coming downstream. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, dictated by by uh, World Health Organization, United Nations. Uh, well, I like to say pharmaceuticals because I know they, they. You know, I, my my philosophy is. It, in the midst of any crisis, I identify the, benefi the beneficiary, and then you know what's behind it. So it's like they're the biggest beneficiaries. Really. At the end of the day, we pay the pharmaceuticals to, to get these drugs, you know, going. Um, my biggest, my biggest disappointment is they have not allowed independent thought. They have not allowed. They don't allow challenge. Mm -hmm. um, I hate it when the media is trained on how to report on HIV. I say. In every reporting, in every radio news bulletin, television uh, newscast, mm -hmm. or, or or newspaper story, they start with a when they start a sentence with um, HIV. The next sentence is the virus that causes AIDS, and no one has ever stopped to challenge that sentence alone. Mm -hmm. Says, "Are you sure about that?" So, like, what if the man died of malaria? <laughs> you know. Uh, we're in Africa. You could have so many other things, uh, you know. Uh, we have we have diseases that are not even known, and somehow, you know, uh, I know the people here because of the the hubs that they're exposed to and all these things. Somehow, we we know how to 
we've lived through it, our immunity system has always been up there. Mm. But now with the introduction of all these drugs that are making people, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but man, it, it, is, it is really an ugly situation. It almost looks good when they come across as though they're being very helpful. It looks nice. Yeah. Oh, it's a big donation from the United States government is giving this amount of money for this and this and this and this and say, wow, that is good. And you're like, yes, for treatment of this to help the suffering people mm. in Africa. And the drugs bring more suffering to Africa. And, and you ask yourself, okay, so what did the people die of? Or uh, they died of medical experiments. Sorry, they died of the drugs that they were taking. Mm. Given, sorry. Um, and you ask yourself, well, was the was it about helping, or was it about finding a place to try out new markets, experimental drugs, experimental drugs? What was this? And that's 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 what pains me. What hurts me a lot is that a lot of people here who have tried to bring up like their own remedies to mm. the problem, yeah. they have been shut up, they have been imprisoned, they're dismissed. As soon as they start to speak, they're never given a chance. Mm. You ask yourself, wait a minute, if this is a problem, we should allow to hear, you know, I think the logical thing to do would be to listen to other possible solutions. So like if one solution, if you've offered one solution, don't shut everybody else up. They say, oh, this is the way it shall be. This is the way it should be. And I think that's, that's, the, that's the real, uh, the sad side to it. Um, and, you know, you can't speak about it because the people involved are a bit too organized. One, one day I made a statement. I said, if, if someone found a cure to AIDS, there would be a lot. There would be a lot of. There would be a lot of unemployment in Africa. That one day, it would be like the cure to AIDS would create a credit crunch in Africa. <laughs> Why? Because then everybody, then, then all all the organisations and the buildings and, the, and and all the structures that have been set up to manage this one disease out of the yeah. so many of it, so many diseases there in the world will all of a sudden be unemployed. Yeah. And as a result of that, everybody has to protect their job. Even people who know better will not speak out because they'll be like, man, do you know how much per diem I get for just going up country to, to, to carry out voluntary testing and counseling? Yeah. You know, in, in a four-wheel drive that's air-conditioned and or everything is being paid, all expenses paid, trips. And what would that figure be? Well, um, most of them are getting added, you know, comfortably uh, put it at a thousand pounds, say for someone who's, uh, uh, you know, who's, who's doing work on a... To conduct a, yes, a, a yes. program for, for a limited yes. amount of time. And, and most of them are usually project-like, so uh, a project could have a lot of money because, um, you know, it has been uh, provided by foreign donors, so it really depends on how good your ideas are. Um, there was one very annoying project um, I say annoying because of the outcome. Um, they said they were going to um, to provide uh, um, to provide uh, money, supporting income and uh, money and uh, support for people who who went to test and found they were positive. Mm. So uh, they went to this village and found all these people who you know kindly asked them yeah let's go for, let's go test let's go test mm. and the big majority of them were negative and a few who were positive were given uh, money to, to to look for affordable housing yeah. uh, they were given food allowances and basically given this very good treatment and this is in a very poor place where what, what what was being offered was really a dream type of lifestyle. As a result, there were people in the villages who went pleading for anybody who had HIV to help them, infect them. This is a true story. And as a result, they would go back and test just so they could get the benefits. These things have been happening in this country 
and you ask you you know you you wonder what the effect is. Um, they've been preaching um, the, to us A B C abstinence be faithful and seize use a condom. That's the strategy that has been mm -hmm. used here. Um, and at one point, the, it was like there was a lot of noise being made about using use of condoms, use of condoms. Mm -hmm. What happened was, I'll give you an example. In my high school, um, I, I took a very long time. I grew up in a single-sex school, so I, I was not like really exposed to so like females. I wasn't exposed to girls. And what happened is, uh, when I joined the university and you know got mixed up with everybody else, mm -hmm. uh, this, um, there was a health company, health service provider, that came door to door in our, in our, in our, in our university hostels. Mm -hmm. Providing us with boxes, 